This is a community-supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. So let's take a look at the curious story of Judge Dennis E. Reinecker. This is from Chief Counsel of the Judicial Conduct Board. So kind of, you'd be familiar with the state bar that licenses attorneys. Well, there's also bodies of, of or boards or entities that oversee judicial conduct and can issue their own reprimands or sometimes even recommend a judge be removed or censured by the Supreme Court of the state in order to uh, stop any uh, huge misconduct or egregious misconduct. But this is just a letter of counsel, as they call it. I don't even think it's listed here as a, okay, issuing a letter. It is. It's, it's listed right here as a letter of counsel. And so the letter of counsel is kind of like a public reprimand. If a lawyer got a public reprimand, this this is what a judge would get, would be a letter of counsel. At least that's my understanding. If someone knows better, I'm sure they will correct me. This is from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and it is out of Lancaster County, which is not Harrisburg. Harrisburg is Dauphin County, um, but Harrisburg would be the seat of Pennsylvania state government. So Lancaster County is actually near and dear to my heart. Lancaster is where, if you've ever heard of the Amish or the Pennsylvania Dutch, uh, not the same thing, um, but uh, the, 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 uh, the Lancaster is a very Amish uh, county um, or has a lot of Amish presence in it as well. And it's a beautiful county, beautiful countryside. I uh, used to do the uh, multiple sclerosis MS-150 ride through Lancaster. It's, it's, it's a beautiful ride, and I highly recommend it, uh, the county and the ride, to anybody. And so let's see what was happening to Judge Reinecker here. I also might be mispronouncing that, but that's the best I can make out of it. They say, following investigation of complaints that President Judge Dennis Reinecker, so it's President Judge, that's the, uh, the chief judge or head judge of the county, Lancaster County Court of Common Pleas, he engaged in misconduct during an April 26, 2019 traffic stop, and the Judicial Conduct Board voted to resolve the matter by issuing this letter of counsel. The dismissal was conditioned on the judge's consent to the board's public release of the letter, the letter of counsel issued to President Judge Reinecker, his acceptance and waiver of confidentiality accompany this press release. Okay, so this isn't the letter, but the letter is attached. Judge Reinecker accepted the letter of counsel earlier today, which was December 30th, 2019. The board issues letters of counsel in cases where there is sufficient evidence of judicial misconduct to warrant the filing of charges in the court of judicial discipline, but considering all facts and circumstances and mitigating factors, the board determines a letter of counsel to be an appropriate decision. So it's a slap on the wrist, but hey, maybe the judge cooperated, maybe he realized that he acted inappropriately, and we're going to give him a chance to not lose everything because of some minor incident. You'll also get a chance to see what the incident was as we found video of it. They released video of the incident and you'll get to judge for yourself whether the conduct was so egregious that maybe something more should have happened or if you think this is enough. And so please definitely let us know in the comments of the video that drops what you think of Judge Reinecker's conduct. But let's continue with how a letter of counsel works. A letter of counsel may be private or public and is subject to the judge's acceptance of the letter and its terms. The conduct at issue in a matter resolved by a letter of counsel can be used as evidence for future complaints before the court of judicial discipline if the judge is charged by the board in the court for subsequent allegations of misconduct. So the letter itself is not going to have any follow-up, but if there was more judicial misconduct, this isn't an extinguishment or expungement of that misconduct. Let's continue. And then this letter of counsel is from December 13th. Dear Judge Reinecker, 
At its most recent meeting, the board reviewed and considered the above-referenced complaints and voted on a final disposition. The board has available to it a private procedure by which it may dismiss a complaint filed against a judicial officer with the issuance of a letter of counsel. The board offers a letter of counsel dismissal to a judicial officer when it decides that although a judge has breached the Code of Judicial Conduct or the Pennsylvania Constitution, the judge's actions, though serious, do not necessarily warrant warrant the board's filing of formal charges in the court of judicial discipline. In order to receive a letter of counsel, a judicial officer must consent in writing and stipulate, which means to agree, that the letter of counsel may be used during future board proceedings if future complaints are, are lodged. As part of this consent, the judicial officer acknowledges that the board may also utilize a letter of counsel in public proceedings if the board directs that action is to be taken on any future complaints. As you were made aware by the board's notice of full investigation from August 13th, so that's when the judge was notified. So when you're thinking about this, remember that stuff like this happens in the background first, before it's made super public. So attorneys, for example, like Richard Leibowitz, might be answering questions like this now, and then we'll find out later whether what the state bar thinks about that. So the full investigation and then supplemental notice from November 4th, which are incorporated by reference below, the above reference complaint and the board's investigation concerned your conduct during a motor vehicle traffic stop April 26, 2019. The board has authorized dismissal of the complaints through its letter of counsel procedure. However, the dismissal is conditioned on your agreement, which we already saw he did agree. In resolving this matter, the board considered all investigatory information, including your June 14th self-report of your conduct. That's going to be really important, everyone. If he really did self-report, which means if he recognized that he committed some bad act and he notified the board of his misconduct before the board had to find out about it from somebody else, that will be counted in his favor as that is that is responsible. That is eating crow while the crow is young and tender instead of waiting for the crow to be old and tough and somebody else's problem. Your response is part of the reasoning and another response from the supplemental investigation and from something from the transcript of deposit. So I guess he was deposed. The board determined that on April 26th, you were the subject of a motor vehicle traffic stop on Pitney Road in Lancaster County. Within a few seconds of bringing your vehicle to a stop, you stepped out of your car and asked the police officer, what do you think you're doing pulling me over for blowing my horn? The officer instructed you to return to your car, which you did only after saying, you better check the registration on this plate soon, mister. Shortly thereafter, the police officer approached the driver's side window and released you from the stop, saying, Have a good day, Judge. During the course of the investigation, you consistently denied that you were attempting to abuse the prestige of your judicial office during the traffic stop. You explained that your conduct was the result of irritation at being stopped by the officer and your belief that you had done nothing wrong. However, you freely admitted that your behavior was inappropriate and that your choice of words and obvious irritation during the traffic stop could create the perceived appearance of impropriety. And think of this. Think of the standard that this judge is going to be held to. The board concluded that your conduct ran afoul of Canon 1, Rule 1 1.2 of the Code of Judicial Conduct, which states, A judge shall uphold and promote the independence, integrity, and impartiality of the judiciary and shall avoid impropriety and the appearance of impropriety. A judge shall act at all times in a manner that promotes public confidence in the independence, integrity, and impartiality of the judiciary and shall avoid impropriety or the appearance of impropriety. While the board found that your conduct could support the filing of formal charges, it decided to resolve the matter through a letter of counsel because of the reasons we said above. He self-reported his conduct, he cooperated in the investigation, his offensive conduct was brief and singular in nature, he later apologized to the police officer, and he accepted responsibility. As you've already agreed, they resolve 
wow, three complaints, I guess. So maybe there already had been pending complaints and his self-report was one of them. And he appeared to personally sign the statement that he finds that's at the end of this letter. We'll see if we'll see if it's there. Upon your signature and statement, this letter will be incorporated with documents, etc., retained by the board. Therefore, please contact us within 10 days to resolve this letter, which we all know now that it was. Uh, so he then appeared and signed on December 30th that he understands and consents to the letter of counsel and that he waives confidentiality. So none of this is confidential anymore, which is how we are able to see it. So that is uh, interesting and educational. Let's see what the actual traffic stop was about. Leading up to this moment, the officer, so we're looking, we're looking at Judge Reinecker in blue there. Um, we are looking from the officer's police car and the officer had pulled into a left turn lane and apparently did so kind of slowly or something. And as Judge Reinecker passed him, uh, I believe he honked his horn and the police officer then started a pursuit and pulled him over. And then this is what happened when he pulled him over. Sir, go back into your car. I'll be with you in a second. You better check the registration on this plate soon, mister. So now you're not supposed to get out of your car unless the uh, police officer tells you to. You know, police officers are, are generally worried about people getting out of their car and confronting them violently. So it would not be a good idea to confront like this in, in general. So it's uh, already something that the officer responded much more appropriately than we've seen others. And very quickly gets back out of his police car. Have a good day, Judge. You bet. And sends the judge on his way. Now, I have a few questions. Um, like, what is it that is the appearance of impropriety there? Well, obviously, now that we've all seen it after the fact, the appearance of impropriety is that the judge seems to have influenced the officer into not prolonging the traffic stop, not conducting a further investigation, not even mentioning what the alleged offense was. You or I would have the officer come up to us and say, do you know why I pulled you over? And that's a trick question, by the way. Because if you say, yes, I know why you pulled me over, well, then that's the beginning of some kind of an admission. Oh, yes, officer, well, I was speeding. Or yes, officer, I didn't have my seatbelt on. Or yes, officer, I have a weapon in the car. Or yes, officer, I have drugs in the car. Are all admissions that the police officer wants you to admit because then the police officer doesn't have to conduct any further investigation as to that fact and the police officer now has probable cause because you admitted something. So if it was a uh, BS traffic stop, if it was a unfounded traffic stop, you would then have admitted something. So the judge doesn't get the normal treatment here, does he? In fact, the judge is able to head off and stop that normal treatment by confronting the officer so quickly and uh, confidently. So the officer behaved quite appropriately, I think, and it could have gotten worse if someone jumped out of their car and approached the officer. A lot of times you see an officer, you know, yell, get back in your car, stay in your car, whatever. And sometimes you even see them start to draw off a taser or a weapon. And in the worst cases, people have literally been shot for jumping out of their car. And the reason for that is that in even worse cases, people have jumped out of their car with a weapon to uh, assault or, or shoot at the police officer. So it's a terrible idea to jump out. of. Don't do that. Don't jump out of your car. You sit there patiently with your hands on the wheel, especially with your hands on the wheel while the officer is approaching you. You don't have to answer questions. In fact, most attorneys would recommend that you don't answer questions. However, it's a little bit softer than that. If you haven't, if you know for sure, for certain that you haven't done anything wrong, well, maybe talking to the officer isn't such a bad idea. Cooperating with the officer often gets you a easier time when you get to court later on. That was actually my business. Uh, 
I used to represent people in traffic court and it was always my first question, not did you do it, but were you polite to the officer? I can, I can just do so much more for you if you were polite to the officer. You don't necessarily have to cooperate. You, 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 don't, you just have to figure out how to do it in a polite way. Um, I've literally said to an officer who pulled over a friend of, or, well, I, I told my friend to say it. Um, I, I, I've, I've literally uh, told someone to say something along the lines of, I, I respect you and the work that you do, officer. Please understand that I, I'm not going to be answering any questions. Uh, that's even a little bit aggressive. So I usually just try to let the officer tell me what's going on and make it clear that I'm not answering any uh, probing questions or 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 questionable questions like, do you know why I pulled you over? The answer to that one should be, why did you pull me over, officer? Not yes or no, in my humble opinion. The officer will ask things like, uh, do I have your consent to search the vehicle? The answer should always be, uh, no, officer, I don't consent to any unwarranted searches. It doesn't have to be disrespectful, though. It doesn't have to be condescending. And sometimes even that's not going to get you out of a police encounter. So mostly you have to stick to your politeness and you're not answering questions and hope that things go your way. Obviously, none of that happened here because President Lancaster County President Judge, I can't believe the president judge, Dennis Reinecker, because he got out of his vehicle and advanced on the cop and then told him that he should check the registration soon. I, 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 that, yeah. So apparently he was concerned, Judge Reinecker was concerned enough by his own behavior, or, or maybe we saw three complaint numbers there. Maybe two of those complaints came first, and then somebody called him or said something like, hey, you might want to self-report. I don't know if that happened. I don't, I don't want to read into it too far, but the judge self-reported, the judge cooperated, and so nothing worse than a sort of public reprimand or public letter of counsel happened to him. But that, that definitely is an inappropriate reaction to being pulled over. If anything, when you are a judge or even a lawyer or someone of stature should be making an example of how to behave, not a, an example of why we don't like corruption and why we are automatically suspicious of people in power. That's the impropriety or appearance of impropriety. So this judge, in my opinion, should be making an example, setting an example for everyone. And if anything, take the ticket or whatever, fight it in, in court yourself or, or whatever, or just do the normal thing with the officer. Don't try to strong arm the officer into giving you your way because the officer knows he's going to have to see the judge again someday. In Pennsylvania, these kinds of traffic stops go before a magistrate judge, which is not Lancaster County and is rather a, a smaller court within Lancaster County, but can always be appealed. Any decision in those magistrate courts can always be appealed to the county uh, courts. And so eventually that officer will be in front of Judge Reinecker again someday. And so he doesn't want to piss off the judge who he's going to need for support when he's asking the judge to find somebody guilty of a traffic offense or worse later on. And I get how that is very practical, that that's how things work, that you don't want to leave a negative impression on people that you will, that will have power over you in some situation. But at the same time, like it's a little bit sad because ideally judges should be judging on the merits of something and not because they're getting back at you for that time that you gave them a ticket instead of letting them off with a warning. I see questions about how the officer didn't check his ID. Um, your vehicle registration in Pennsylvania, everything's computerized now. They don't even have the little registration stickers anymore because all that's computerized. I am assuming that one, like I just said, it's a cop who might have to appear. Well, he's probably already appeared before this judge. He might have been able to look up a picture of the judge on the judge's driver's license and seen, yeah, this is the same guy. He might know the judge already and just 
didn't know the car, of course. It's much harder to tell who it is from the car. But once you pull up the name, you might go, oh, yeah, I know that name. Oh, yeah, that yeah, that's the guy. He gets out of the car. He sees his face. He recognizes him. So we don't know if that happened. But uh, there's no reason to believe that he didn't check the ID of the driver. He just didn't get the driver to give him the driver's license and check all of that, probably because all that comes up anyway. But yeah, that's a concern too. If if he hadn't checked the the driver the, the ID of the driver to make sure it's not a stolen car or not an impersonator or something. But those are way way less likely scenarios for a routine traffic stop in Lancaster County. Lancaster County is pretty quiet. Um, it's not the it's, it's not the quietest rural county, but it's definitely more rural than city. And so I'm just not anticipating that cops or, or, or officers are generally looking for impersonators or stolen vehicles, especially when stolen when, when you know they pulled over quickly and are and are aside from jumping out of the car are are like are interacting with the officer. Um, that's not something I would expect to see in a stolen vehicle scenario or something like that. When he got out of the car, I had like a little bit, my chest went like a little bit tight because as a police officer, these traffic stops can be dangerous. Yeah. Like you can get um, run over uh, by by vehicles not involved in the traffic stop. Uh, yeah. You can, you don't know if someone has, um, if someone has a weapon in their car, you don't know if they're in their right mind or not. And so if they're getting out of the car and then approaching you in an aggressive way, Man, the first thing is to be like, oh, my God, this is serious. <laughs> when like you could be pulling them over for a broken taillight and suddenly you're in a in a very threatening situation. So personally, I wouldn't want to do anything to make the cop feel like they're in a threatening situation. So my chest just went a little bit tight. Like as a cop, he could have like put his hand to his to his gun. Yeah. You yeah, know? he could. He could. He could have probably even drawn his weapon and been within his rules of engagement. Uh, I I don't I, I don't like that, but at the same time, I've also seen more than one video, including one famous one out of Canada, where a Mountie pulls somebody over and calmly gets out of his car and then raises a gun and kills the Mountie. Am I am I using the right words there? Are they Mounties? Um in, in, could, over up, up yeah, there in Canada? <laughs> It depends on what uh, province you're in. So some provinces have a provincial police, okay. and some have the mountains. Depending it on. Was, I just if I, I I really love the uniform with the straight brimmed hat and the red coat. There, it's a beautiful yes. uniform. It really is. Yes, and yes, they are all trained on horse riding. <laughs> That's a real thing. <laughs> well, they are the mounted police, so I would hope that they would be uh, mounted on horses and not mounted on four-wheelers or go-karts so let us know what you think of judge reineker in the comments below whether you think he committed a more egregious act than what he was charged with or, or what the effect was or if you think that allowing him to uh, get a public reprimand and having all of us talk about him and sort of being embarrassed about it and and his self-reporting and all that might mean that that he should be given another chance I'm not saying there's a right answer here. This is perfectly open for debate and discussion. Just try to keep it civil. That's our show, everyone. Thanks for joining me. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. Thank you to our February supporters on patreon.com slash ljfrench and sponsus.com slash law. We really appreciate your support, your financial support for the month of February. It's what keeps our channel going and growing and keeps us able to bring these videos to you on new and upcoming topics of law. So thank you very much. I'm Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. I will see you in the videos that drop. Have a great one. Love you all. Bye.